Okay, let's do some limits involving trig functions. So yes, trig is definitely coming back. Whether you like it or not, there are gonna be trig problems uh, mixed in with the calculus. So this does require you to remember some things from pre-calculus, but I will be reviewing this as we go through. So this right here is a unit circle for values of zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. So this gives you the X and Y values for all the angles that are on here. This here is something that you want to memorize in this course because most of the angles that come up are going to be the angles specifically that are on the unit circle here. So zero, pi over two, and so forth. Now, yeah, there are some angles that are between zero and pi over two that we want to take a look at. Um, and you want to know those values also, but primarily these are the ones that come up most often or the ones that end up in the 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. These are the ones that most often uh, come up there. Okay, so this applies for this particular problem here. So this says you want to find the limit as x approaches pi of tangent. Now tangent, when you're looking at it in a circle, we can uh, write that as an identity. Okay, so this is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. As far as the unit circle is concerned, this is the same thing as a y value. Your sine is always y values and your cosine is always x values. So this is saying that at the angle of pi right here, we want to find the y value over the x value. If we look at pi right here, the y value is 0 and the x value is negative one. You're not dividing by zero in this case, as you are able to calculate this limit directly. Zero over anything is gonna be zero, so it means that's the answer to the whole problem. The limit as x approaches infinity of tangent, that's going to be uh, zero. Next, we're gonna do this one down below, so this one also requires us to plug in a value. Now, since we don't have any fractions happening here, we don't need to worry about this being undefined. We're just going to plug this in directly. So this is the limit. Actually, if we're plugging in the value, we can just go ahead and write it this way. We're going to do 3 times pi over 6. And then that's going to be cosine of, okay, 3 over 6 is going to end up giving us pi over 2 when we plug that in. Okay, so we want cosine refers to an x value. We want the x value at pi over 2. Here's pi over 2 on our unit circle. We want the x value. The x value there is going to be 0. Okay, so the, the answer for the whole problem there, this is also 0. So both of these, uh, our answer just so happens to be 0. Is that always going to happen? No, just coincidence that these two particular examples we got 0. Not all trig functions you'll get a 0 as the answer. Okay, here's another one with trig. Again, with these kind of problems, the first thing you always want to do is plug in the value to make sure you're not dividing by 0. If I plug pi over 2 in here, we need to know, first of all, an identity. We have to know that secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So if I put in pi over 2 and place the theta here, what will happen is I'm going to be dividing by 0. So in that case, this is a problem where I do have to do some kind of manipulation to get it to work out. I can't just plug that in directly. And the reason why this is 1 divided by 0, because again, you're doing cosine of pi over 2. Pi over 2 here, that angle, the x value is 0. So again, that's why I have 1 over 0 uh, happening. So because of that, I need to use some identities in order to flip this. Okay, Otherwise, I'm going to be getting a division by 0 happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all these into sines and cosines. Usually for problems like this, that's, that's most often the case that's going to work for you, is if you change all these into sines and cosines. Here's one identity that we're going to use. The other one that we want to know is sine over cosine. That's a way to turn tangent into sines and cosines there. So I'm going to, I'm going to write it out uh, that way. So on top, I have sine theta over cosine theta. On the bottom, I have 1 over cosine theta. So I need to use these identities to plug in because I want to make this simpler and cancel out the part that's causing the problem here. When I fl uh, flip that around, I get limit as theta approaches pi over 2. I have the top fraction. We're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So we're going to do cosine over 1. The cosines are going to cancel out. And that gives me limit as theta approaches pi over 2 
of sine theta. So now I no longer have to worry about dividing by zero because I got the cosines to cancel. So next, what I'm gonna do is put in pi over two in place of theta. What is this telling us? It's asking us to find the y value at pi over two. So here's pi over two on the unit circle. And we wanna look at the y value because it's a sine. Remember, cosine is always x, your sine is always a y. Okay, so that's the y value at pi over two. That's gonna be one. That's the answer to the whole problem. So again, it's not gonna be undefined. If it's undefined, you need to try and, and use some kind of identities to flip things around. And a lot of times you'll be able to get something to cancel and that way you'll get an exact number for the answer. So for the whole problem, the answer here is going to be 1.